robotic arm. Um, I'm Kyle Reed, it's Jennifer Walters. And here we go. So the requirements and specifications for our arm was we wanted to have an arm that had three degrees of motion. And so it, it can go, I guess, up and down, and then it can rotate in 180 degrees, and then the clock can open and close. So if you move the joystick in the X or Y, or in the positive or negative X direction, you get the, uh, the claw to open or close, and you also get the, um, the, the arm to rotate, depending on which mode you're in. And then if you move the joystick in the positive or negative Y direction, you get the uh, arm to go up and down, depending on in, that's in both modes. And the, uh, the, uh, the claw was obviously needed to be able to pick up objects, otherwise it kind of sees the purpose. So here's our system block diagrams. This is kind of a general overview of what our hardware is. So we've got a Nexus board, joystick, servo, controller, and then we have their servos. Um, this is what we did in our Nexus, in our, uh, our actual hardware. So we've got our, our micro blaze, and we've got the, you know, the usual suspects, the GPS for the LCD and the, the LEDs. And then we, we uh, use an SPI to control the, joystick, control the joystick. So you have, um, you have dual data lines, so you've got the joystick works by sending bytes to the joystick, and there's actually a microcontroller on the joystick that um, that allows that um, takes information from the potentiometers for the movement of the joystick, and then as you send bits in, it sends back bits at the same time until you have all your bits. And we also have uh, three timer counters that control our PWMs for um, all three servos, so each one has its own independent PWM, so we can control them with different rates, and we can control them at the same time. And that goes to a, a servo controller from uh, Digilent, <coughs> which is basically just kind of a, a board that takes in signals and sends them back out. It doesn't really do much. It just kind of is that interface. <coughs> this is our software flow diagram. So it starts out, and then it looks to see if it's in claw mode. If it is, then your X direction is to open the claw, and then your, your other X direction is a closed claw, and your Y direction is to move the arm up and down. If it's not in claw mode, then the X direction is for the rotation of the arm. <coughs> Oops. There we go. So this is a design overview. Um, the joystick, that's the mod there. Um, it's controlled by the SPI core, and you've got you know the, the general things, you, the slave select, the clock. Um, you've got the, the MOSI in the, in the MISO. And uh, you send information out on, the, on the, uh, the master out slave in. And so you send out just a byte. The first byte's the only one that matters. And the first byte contains information about what the LED status on the, uh, the board is going to be. The, the board has two LEDs. We didn't actually use them, but if you send um, information on that first byte, that you can set them high or low or whatever. And uh, the, the remaining bits don't actually do anything. They just, you can have them be whatever you want. They just, as you send one in, another one pops out the other side. And uh, the first bit is the low. The, uh, the X um, values for the joystick position are in two separate, um, they're actually, it's actually a 10-bit number, so they send it in two bytes. And uh, the top, the low bytes come in the first, the first byte that comes out of the, out of the uh, joystick, and then the high byte comes in the second one, and then the Y is the third and fourth. Um, the ranges for values are zero to ten twenty three. So as you move the joystick from left to right, it's gonna adjust what values come out of the GPIO. So um, for our servos, we use PWM. We use. Uh, for each servo, we have two uh, timers which control our pulse width. I don't know if you guys know how servers work or servos work, but they um, range in 180 degrees depending on the pulse width that you send. So you send it a, pul a high pulse width of between um, 1.5 to 2.5 milliseconds, and it wants to see that pulse once every about 20 milliseconds. So we use our first uh, timer to control the period of 20 milliseconds and our second one, which is a variable depending on the movement of the joystick, which um, sends the high pulse out. Uh, integration testing was a big part of this, considering we used a couple of modules that we never used before. So in order to test the, uh, the joystick, we used the LCD and the LEDs. And uh, we adjusted, we moved the joystick and mapped the, uh, the low numbers, the low bits for the, uh, for the joystick's position to the LEDs. That way we could see um, the 8-bit number in real time to know where it is and, and what the high value is and what the low value was. And to get the, the upper value, the top two bits, we used the LED and just coded them to make, you know, 
it was either going to be 0, 256, 512, or 768. And we just added that to the 8 bits that were displayed on the LEDs. And then for the buttons, same kind of procedure. You just get the LEDs, and as you push the button, the LED would blink or light up. And then um, if you push a button on the Nexus board, it would light up one of the LEDs on the, on the joystick. So when we initially set up the servos, we were using delays, which um, were very inaccurate and you'd have to change if, like when we added the joystick in and everything. So we decided to go to our timer counters to do our pulse width modulation. Um, and we basically, after we did that, we used an oscilloscope to see what our PWM was putting out. And then we incremented our joystick into the servos and basically determined the rate of change of our servos kind of just by, you know, from trial and error. That's how we did that. That's all we got. Any questions? All right, let's check it out.